Well, hello there. Hey, it's a couple days later. I've got another uh, batch of charcoal going. And, uh, well, you know, I thought I would show you my little camp stove here that works on the same principle as the charcoal kiln. So, uh, I'll show you my little camp stove and talk about the principles, how the charcoal kiln works. So, I'll show you how similar this is. I'll take it apart. This is just a number 10 can, big coffee can, and I took the lid, cut it off with a side, side cutting uh, uh, can opener, uh, made a hole in the top, and uh, cut little tabs, made it just the right size to fit this can. I think this is a tomato juice can. Now, this is kind of like uh, the charcoal kiln with a 55-gallon drum and a 35-gallon drum. Now, this, by the way, is a pot stand and uh, kind of a chimney, and this is a support for the pot. See, i got a pot of water here, and i got a, a cup of tea, a little Bigelow English breakfast. No, I know that's not an English accent. It's a, well, it's a sugar thing, and, and a Pippin thing. Anyway, either you get it or you don't. Uh, so, I'm going to put the pot stand together here with some little supports for the pot so I can make myself a cup of tea while I'm showing you how this works. Alright, I'm going to set this aside. Now, this is like the 35 gallon drum, this is like the 55 gallon drum. This has holes along the bottom. 55 gallon drum has some little slots on the bottom. I don't know if you saw that in the video or not. Uh, 35 gallon drum also has holes in the bottom, so does this. This has some extra holes along, along the side. There's blood bottom as well. Now, in the charcoal kiln, the 35 gallon drum is blocked up off the bottom of the 55 gallon drum with a few pieces of scrap metal, about one inch bar. And uh, that allows the air to flow in and through the charge of wood. Now, here, instead of that, I've just got it suspended. You can see it's the right height to be sitting above the bottom of this can. Air comes in here and through the bottom, and then it comes up around the outside between the cans, just like it does between the barrels. And these little holes here let the air come in. Um, with the barrels, the inner barrel's a little shorter, and the air just comes across the top when it's like with the lid on. So it's kind of similar in that way, and kind of different. Now this, I'm just going to pour in a bunch of little chunks of wood, it's just like the charcoal kiln in miniature. Isn't that exciting? Okay. I'm going to start this with a little bit of uh, cotton balls soaked in petroleum jelly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if, you, if they don't stick to your finger too bad, it's a pretty good fire starter. If they do stick to your finger too bad, it's still a good fire starter, it just hurts more. Yeah, see what I mean? Now let's put the pot stand on top, the chimney I should say, with the pot stand on it. Pot support. And this is very much like putting the flue pipe on my charcoal kiln. It provides a, a chimney, it gives it a better draft. So that's going to give the fire a better start. It's going to help it burn a little cleaner. I've got smoke here. That's mostly from the cotton balls and petroleum jelly. And uh, so I've got to wait for that to die down before I put my pot of water on top. Got a good burn going in that. And we got a good burn going in that. Can't really see the flame. Maybe you can see the shimmers. Okay, a little bit about how this design works. Now, the top lit updraft, or TLUD design, was developed by Dr. Thomas Reed in 1985 as a small-scale gasifier, a way to extract combustible gases from biomass. So, it's a wood gas stove. Now, the idea is to separate the gas from the wood and burn it as a fuel in its own right. This results in a cleaner burn than you can get from burning wood and gas in the same space. From this perspective, charcoal is a byproduct. Now I'm using the same design principles, but I've turned the original purpose on its head. My purpose is to produce charcoal. The wood gas is a byproduct. So here's how the system works. Remember, the goal is to separate the extraction of wood gas from its combustion. In a normal open fire, these two happen at the same time and in the same space. In a gasifier, primary and secondary combustion air are separated so that these two processes occur separately. 
The fire that starts the process at the top of the fuel chamber, the smaller barrel or can, heats the fuel sufficiently to release the combustible wood gas. This process is called pyrolysis, and it leaves behind unconsumed charcoal. Because there's not enough oxygen present in the fuel chamber, the charcoal remains unconsumed until the pyrolysis front reaches the bottom of the fuel chamber where the incoming primary air would provide the oxygen to consume the remaining charcoal if the process were not shut down at that point. And that's that glow I look for at the bottom of the barrel through the window in, my, in the outside barrel of, of my charcoal kiln. Now the secondary air that rises between the fuel chamber and the outer wall of the stove, or between the barrels, or between the cans, is allowed to come into contact with the heated wood gas above the top of the fuel chamber. This combusts the wood gas and converts it into heat energy. Earlier I mentioned that given my purpose in using this design to produce charcoal, the wood gas is a byproduct. At present, I'm kind of wasting it by just burning it off right away. I could certainly use it for heat by making an indoor charcoal kiln for use in the winter, for starters. There's probably a way to store the wood gas for ye later use, but that's beyond the scope of my project so far. But I'm still ahead of the game using charcoal as my forage fuel because the carbon dioxide produced comes from trees that probably took that CO2 from the atmosphere in the last 30 to 70 years or so. So I'm light years ahead of releasing CO2 that has been sequestered underground for millennia as I would do by burning coal in my forge. Burning charcoal makes my operation carbon neutral. Now, making charcoal in this way also puts me ahead of the game because of the low emissions such a process produces, consuming most of the particulate matter as well as most of the carbon monoxide and methane, which is 30 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than CO2. I also avoid burning extra fuel. The only fuel I'm burning that isn't intended to become charcoal, and some of it does anyway, is the small amount of kindling I use to start the fire. So I get a clean, non-polluting burn and an environmentally friendly forge fuel. It does my tree hugging heart some good. Now, if I were to dig and reduce my own ore as well, I'd really understand the true value of the material I work with. I guess that appreciation of the value of things, knowing where it all comes from, what kind of resources and energy go into producing all that we have and use, or not knowing it, is a big part of why we do things the way we do. It's worth thinking about. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a boil. Quick, lance it. You. Charming. like if you take the flu off it just looks like a fire I'm driving the charcoal uh, container thing you pull it so there I'll use this part of the video chicken says hi okay so I got my earbuds on I'm gonna saw off this wood I gotta strap it down yet, am I so mean? <laughs>